of the grade 9 academic course. We're still solving equations. These are multi-step equations. These are basically we're finding x in harder problems is the goal for today. Okay, the other thing I'm going to show you how to do is check a solution. Uh, you will definitely find that on your assignment and on your test I will at some point ask you to check solutions. So you want to know, um, you don't have to do it every time, but it's actually a pretty good skill, especially um, especially when you're test writing, even if I don't ask you to. Check to see if you got the right answer. Anyway, in this question here, first we're going to start by solving for x. And you can see already it's a harder question. Okay, um, what we need to do is we need to, but we still follow the same idea. We need to get all the terms of x on one side. And typically we like to have all the x's, the variable terms, like x or r or whatever it is, on the left side of the equation, and then all the number terms on the right. If it's the other way around, it's still accurate. That's just a sort of a communication thing, okay? So we want to get all the terms of x over on the left and all the just numbers over to the right, okay? And, that, and, and we're collecting all the like terms. So opposite operation says that um, I'm going to bring this 2x over here. So if I have a 2x here, I get rid of it. It's, it's essentially it's the same as having a plus in front of it, right? It's not negative, it's a plus. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides because 2x subtract 2x is 0 and I'll subtract 2x from here. Okay, and again with the goal of getting all the x's on the left. Okay, so that's the next line. Um, collecting my terms, right? Just re rewriting it in the right order. And now all I'm left with here is just the 11 because the 2x subtract 2x is 0. And you end up with 2x minus 7 equals 11 is 4x minus 2x is 2x. And then I got to get the 7 over. The opposite operation is add. So, so add 7 to both sides. And you end up with 2x equals 18. 2 is multiplied by x. So I get rid of the 2 by dividing by both sides by 2. And you end up with x equals 9. Okay, so that's the solution to a multi-step problem. Now we're going to check that solution. We're going to check that solution. What I mean by that is you sub in x equals 9 into the original equation, to the very, very first equation that was written in the question, and just see if the left side, left-hand side, LHS is what I mean by that, equals the right-hand side when x equals 9. Okay, and you'll see what I mean down here. So I say left-hand side of the equation is 4x minus 7. Okay? And the right hand of the equation was uh, 2x plus 11, right? Yeah, 2x plus 11. I don't know why I have that little dot there. Um, so then I'm going to sub in x equals 9, right? So that equals 4 times 9. Instead of x, I write 9 minus 7. And same thing here, 2, 9 plus 11. So I end up with 29 on the left and 29 on the right. So I can say yes, my answer is good. Since left hand side, equals right hand side my solution is correct. So if I had made an error somewhere and say I got x equals 3 and when I solved the equation I plugged in the numbers I would end up with you know for 4 times 3 minus 7 would be um, 5 over here and 2 times 3 plus 11 is um, 6, uh, 17. I would have ended up with these two sides not equal to each other and that would have tell me that I made a mistake along the way and I need to re revisit my solving part. Okay, so that's why we check the solution to make sure our answer is correct. And for sure, this is something you'll have to practice on your assignment and on your, um, and on your test. Okay. Um, this one, we're not asked to check it. Um, we are just looking in this one just on solving a harder question. Um, again, the idea, just thinking back to what we have to do, is we need to collect like terms. We need to get all the m's on the left and all the just numbers on the right. Looking at this, I can see that I have minus 4m, and the opposite operation is add. So I'm going to add 4m to both sides of the equation will be the next step. Okay, so minus 4m plus 4m is 0, and I end up with 2m plus 4m over there. Okay, so 2m plus 4m is 6m. And then I go minus 6, I'm going to add 6 to both sides, add 6 to both sides. You end up with 6m equals 18. If m is multiplied by 6, I need to divide both sides by 6. And you end up with m equals 3. Okay? 
that's just doing another two-step harder, harder, more than two-step equation. Okay, these ones are hard ones. Here, you've got distributive law. You've got something with brackets. So what do we do? Well, we've got to get rid of the brackets. Okay, so in order to solve this equation, and you notice I just threw in a 1 there. So if you have just minus y minus 2 is the same as minus 1 times y minus 2. You know, you don't have to put that 1 there if you don't want to, but um, that's how I think of it with distributive law. But anyways, the first step to, you know, I need to get y by itself, right? So the first step to getting y by itself is to use dis apply distributive law so that I get rid of the brackets. So I get rid of brackets first, and this is what I put in the next line. And let's just see how I got everything. 5 times y, 5y. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Negative 1 times y is negative y. Negative 1 times negative 2 is plus 2. Okay, so this is just a straight application that we did in the last, uh, the last uh, unit. And I still just have 19 over here. Okay? So I haven't really changed anything, by the way. You notice I didn't do anything. I did all this stuff on the left. I didn't do anything on the right. Well, the reason is I'm not really adding or subtracting anything new. I'm just rewriting this without the, without the brackets. So now I just uh, collect the like terms. So 5y minus y gives me my 4y. Minus 15 plus 2 is minus 13 equals 19. Now i got to get um, rid of this minus 13, so I just have y's on the left. So I add 13 to both sides. Then I end up with 4y equals 32. If I want to get y by itself, I have to divide both sides by 4, and you end up with y equals 8. Okay? So eliminate the brackets, collect the like terms, bring all the y to the same side and all the constants to the other side. Okay, another one. Ooh, that's a good one. Look at that. <laughs> I did the same thing here again. I threw in a minus one times five, you know, times the bracket here. Um, so to remind you, the first step is just all over the place. I'm going to um, use apply distributive law. So I'm going to apply distributive law right here. I'm going to apply distributive law right here. I'm going to apply it right here and right here. So I'm going to do it four times in one step. Okay? So let's just see. I'll show you how I got every number. 3 times 5x is 15x. 3 times positive 4 is positive 12. Minus 1 times 5x is minus 5x. Minus 1 times 4 is minus 4. So that's that whole side without the brackets. And then after that equal side, um, 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times negative 1 is minus 2. Uh, minus 2 times x is minus 2x. And minus 2 times minus 7 is positive 14. Okay, so that looks like a lot, but you know, you just, if you just take it one bracket at a time, it's not so bad. So what I've done in this next step is I've just sort of collected all the like terms on each side. So 5x minus, or sorry, 15x minus 5x gives me my 10x. Plus 12 minus 4 is plus 8. Over here I've got 6x minus 2x to get 4x. And minus 2 plus 14 to get plus 12. Now I'm going to bring all my x's to the same side of the equation, so I subtract 4x from each side. Okay, so I get um, rid of this 4x. And you end up with 10x minus 4x is 6x plus 8 equals just 12 over here. These are gone. Now I'm going to bring this 8 to the other side by subtracting it from both sides. And you end up with 6x equals 4. And I want to get x by itself, so I have to divide both sides by 6. And you get x equals 4 over 6, or in lowest terms, x equals 2 over 3. Okay? So that's a doozy. That's a big question, for sure. Okay, here's a couple um, interesting ones. We have to solve equations involving geometry. So this first one says, in a pair of supplementary angles, well the first thing is I don't necessarily need you to remember what that is, I'll tell you what that is. Supplementary means the angles add up to 180. So any two angles, for example, 
120 degrees and 60 degrees are supplementary because they add up to 180. Okay? So it's saying in a pair of supplementary angles, one angle is three times bigger than the other. So what's each angle for that to be true? And a lot of you are sort of quick and wit you know, sort of clever enough to be able to think that through in your brain. And you don't realize you're solving an equation in your brain when you do it, but you are. But I'm going to show you how to do it with an equation because some of us aren't so quick to be able to do things right away. We need to go through the steps. So how do you do it? I say, well, okay, if these are my two angles, and you might remember that two, 180 degrees is a straight line. So if I had, you know, a line right here and say that little one was x and this was 3x, okay? Because it says one angle is three times bigger. So this angle must be exactly three times bigger than this angle. I'd say, okay, say I call the smaller one x, then the bigger one must be 3x, so it's three times bigger. And x plus 3x has to add, add up to 180. So the whole thing adds to 180. So collect my like terms, you get 4x equals 180. Divide both sides by 4. And you get x equals 45. So 45 and then the, the bigger angle must be 3 times 45, which is 135. Okay. And that's how you solve a question like that one. Now you might get, you're not always going to get one that's just like this, but that is an example of a question you could see. And now we have one with perimeter. Equio loves these questions, by the way. Okay. So imagine you've got, and this, I think these plus threes is a, is a correction that you need to make, or like I made the error when I wrote your, when I wrote your handout. Um, I missed these plus threes, so if you could add them to yours. And this is something you just got to get your head around. You're given, for some reason, and I have no clue why, but for some reason you know that each side length of a triangle as a function, or in terms of x, right? So this side length from here to here is equal to 3x plus 1. It's isosceles, so these two are the same. And this one's 2x minus 3. And the side length of each of these is 2x plus 3. So this is an equilateral triangle. It says, well, how do I find, like it's asking me to find the side length, each of these side lengths, in terms of a number. The information we have is that they have the same perimeter. So the sum perimeter means that if I added up all these side lengths on this triangle, it would equal all these ones added up. Right? That's what perimeter means, the side lengths. So here's the next line. Since perimeter 1 of this one equals perimeter of this one, I go, well, 3x plus 1 plus 3x plus 1 plus 2x minus 3 equals 2x plus 3, 2x plus 3, 2x plus 3. And so, again, the goal here is just to find out what each side length is. So what I need to do that is find x. Even though you know, the question never said find x, I still have to find x. <laughs> Every go is finding x. So if we just go through the steps here. Um, the step, first of all, being I'm going to collect like terms. So 3x plus 3x plus 2x is 8x. 1 plus 1 minus 3 is minus 1. 2 plus 2x plus 2x plus 2x is 6x. And then 3 plus 3 plus 3 is plus 9. Okay. And now I have to, again, I want to get all the x's on the left and all the numbers on the right. So I subtract 6x from both sides. I end up with 2x minus 1 equals 9. Then I, that leads me to having 2x equals 10. Divide both sides by 2. And I end up with x equals 5. Now, you want to wash your hands and say, OK, problem solved. But the question isn't asking for 5x. It's not asking for x. It's asking for the side lengths. So the last step to this question then is taking you know, each of these side lengths and subbing in x equals 5 and seeing what it ends up being. So for this one, 3x plus 1, I sub in 3 times 5 plus 1, right? So instead of x, I write 5. So that side length is 16. We're not really given a unit, but it is what it is. And for the 2x minus 3 side, again, you sub in x equals 5, and you end up with 7. So these side lengths on this isosceles triangle are uh, 16? Yeah. 16 here, 16 here, and 7. And then we're asked to find what this side length is. And that's under here, under this magic box. 2x plus 3. No, oh, that's a mistake. It's 2 times 5 plus 3, which is not 9, 18. Right? Or 13. So 2 times 5 plus 3. 
So 10 plus 3 are 13. Okay? So each of these side lengths, it's equilateral, all the same at 13. 13 kilometers, meters, I don't know, <laughs> whatever the unit is. Anyway, though, you'll definitely see questions like that as you go through your assignment work and as you prep for your crew. And that's it. Please uh, put down any questions you have, and that's it for today.